his view of the format was going to be you there are decks that are just trying to counter you again though that, that um there, there's so many decks where you have to just kind of prepare for how you want things to go and if you just if you predict wrong and you you know you, you want the the slower version to be more good against more decks and then they're just not there it's gonna be really tough for you all right we do get to see the prices the coming bird down trio. all right all right so it looks like well we have a pretty pretty interesting deck here from drew we have the uh the bird trio gx ho -Oh ex a card we haven't seen in a while Yep, that rebirth ability is something that a lot of players used to use years ago, and he is going to get some play out of it here in Expanded right now. And we are off here. Round six here from Collinville, <coughs> Illinois. Andrew Mahone versus Drew Kate. Battle of former regional champions. Battle of some of the best players in the game. Let's see what Andrew can put together here as he is going first. Again, no supporter. We do get to see, oh, look at this already, Andrew trying to, to work his way down so he can draw some cards, going to go ahead and use a uh, field blower on his own sky field, trying to get anything moving and doesn't have yeah, it. doesn't have an energy, doesn't really have much. That, that that shaman kind of play is very indicative that his hand is not where he wants to be, at least here on the first turn, and he just has to pass it back. We see a battle compressor, one of the uh, kind of things that separates expanded from standard, I think, one of the very, very powerful cards. Um, in the format, we're gonna. This is a perfect uh, kind of card to use with Ho Two, of course, spreading energy around. Uh, so we have to see what Drew gets here. This is a Battle Compressor is really one of the cards that fuels these sort of engines. There's uh, you know the old Night March decks, the Vespaquin decks, this sort of thing where your discard pile is used as a resource, and Battle Compressor is just the best card to do that sort of thing with. Yep, so we do get to see Drew's going to start to push through his deck. Of course, you want to grab that ho with the Rebirth ability. Uh, just get that in the discard as early as possible. And potentially, if you have some energies to go with it, then you can start to really accelerate and put Mahone on a clock, because it looks like Mahone is not having a great time right now. Uh, his hand really didn't go anywhere, and you you can't be too sure with the, the first turn rules. Of course, he could have a supporter that could start to get him through, but he did not seem very happy as he was playing his cards out. Yeah, it looks like from my view, Mahone had a Colrus, which is which is a supporter that can get him through, but if, depending on what uh, the the bench looks like yeah, from not, Drew's side, it might not be too good here. <laughs> not, not, certainly not on that first turn, and uh, maybe maybe Drew also has, has a, a slight read on that as well. You, you never want to overbench unnecessarily, but we'll see where he decides to go with this. Yeah, just some of the things you have to think about and expand it as we do see Drew goes for the, the triple ho off the Battle Compressor. Trainer's Mail finds him a quick ball. New addition to the format as well that's been obviously very great, especially in the, the face of this uh, supporter um, rule on turn one. We see Ninja Boy is hitting the discard pile. See what this quick ball gets. Haven't really seen this sort of deck. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what it is entirely made up of besides, of course, the bird trio and the um, ho -Oh interaction. Yep, so we do see that Victini has that V beat down. So if, you, of course, you can get a little more extra damage going along uh, with the basic Pokemon in play. So we could see a similar strategy to uh, the Snorlax just focused on a, a, a lighter Pokemon, a Pokemon that only gives up one prize card. I do think that's going to be something that we'll see throughout um, the tournament here is the the one versus two versus sometimes even three prize uh, race and how that really affects things. And we see a Skyfield and then a big Shaman for four. Oh, man, well, look at that. Off of the, the Shaman there, he found Ultra Ball and multiple energy. That's exactly what Drew wants to find so that he can start to get his Ho-Ohs uh, active with that ability, and he can also start to burn through. It looks like, yeah, he's going to go ahead and just check, his, check his discard right there. He's like, all right, <laughs> how close am I already? I've already got two energies, three Ho-Ohs, so I've got pretty good odds of accelerating some energies this turn. Yeah, just immediately slams down the Ultra Ball. You want those, diff you want those energies in the discard pile. You want those different types as well, just an incredible Start. And it looks like uh, Drew is going to be pretty pretty aggressive here as far as drawing cards goes. You see, as he quick balls for that. The Denai has the Shaman in hand, getting another one off of this Ultra Ball, and it's just kind of this is this is very reminiscent of like the the old uh, Mega Rayquaza decks. I said the Snorlax deck was, but this start from Drew has just been so so aggressive. Yeah, Drew saying, "Hey, this is what your deck should do. <laughs> I'm going to show you what, what's going on." Another three cards, including another Battle Compressor. Yeah, he found another Battle Compressor, and it looks like another Shaman EX too. So we'll be able to get exactly the amount of energies he wants in the discard pile. If not more, if he wants to get multiple ho -Oh out, we'll see really what the strategy is for him. And then he can maybe start to thin down a little bit more in this hand so that he can use another Shaman. We'll see just how committed he is 
uh, to this opening turn. The other thing to think about is we saw that um, Andrew did have that weak opening hand, but had the colorist, and it looks like Drew will be playing into the colorist, you know, trying to execute his strategy. So Andrew is kind of under the gun here a little bit, but that colorist should bring things back right where he wants to be. Right. It just depends on if he needed to get anything going specifically on that opening first turn, maybe an energy attachment on a relevant Pokemon. Uh, it, it really did seem like Mahone felt like this wasn't uh, going to work out for him the way that he went so aggressive to draw some cards. Yeah, absolutely. We do see Battle Compressor just putting more energy. I think there's that third type now. I think there's a Fire Water in the discard pile already, so that yep. Electric is getting added. So those are the types that he needs. So now he has three ho -Oh in the discard pile. He has the energy he could want. Just It might just become up to Rebirth Flips now. All right, well, you can't get that unlucky, can you? Nope. <laughs> Immediately gets the flip. ho -Oh EX comes onto the bench, and now three different types of energy from the discard pile attached. Talk about some acceleration. That's exactly where he wants to be. Gets to attach one from hand as well. That's right. Now we get to see that Ninja Boy coming into play. Okay, oh, yeah, here we go. There we go. Oh my that's the bird goodness. Trio. Are you kidding and me? That's just the game. <laughs> he just <laughs> takes gives the him whole a thumbs game. up and scoops it up. <laughs> Oh man, yes. This, he of course gets to use that GX attack and do 310 da or 110 damage to three different Pokemon. Boom, boom, boom. They're all off the board. Let's go to game two. Yep, Andrew Mahone left with no Pokemon. Cannot legally play the game, and that's <laughs> the power of the not only the expanded format cards like Battle Compressor, um, how how many powerful cards there are in the format, but also how that how the turn one rule has changed things. Right in a different world, maybe Andrew just maybe Andrew just kind of goes for the Guzma for you know three or four or whatever he can get puts things together but uh the drew just decimated the board there and that i mean that took a lot of battle compressors you know he, he was he was fortunate in getting those different energy types of the shaman but wow that was an impressive showing from the from the ho uh bird trio deck yeah I'm, I'm curious maybe if andrew was able to get one more pokemon what would have happened afterwards because uh andrew did seem to have a, a, a good amount of energies that he could have or a good amount of cards he could have gotten off the colrus if he were to happen to draw a good chain of cards and then maybe start to make a big comeback how much uh late game does this deck have for Drew? Because it seems like it's really focused on that opening turn. Right, and there comes a point where, you know, after you've used your GX attack, if it doesn't just outright win you the game, maybe you took some prizes, maybe you didn't, um, but then you move in and can, and I just don't know if Ho-Oh EX can really clean up, especially the big 340 HP uh, Pokemon like Snorlax VMAX before Andrew can, you know, kind of execute the strategy. So it, will, it remains to be seen whether this is the sort of thing that Drew can pull off consistently um, but he, he definitely got it once and maybe you know maybe he can sneak it in again and win the round yeah we'll really just have to see of course not the game that Andrew wanted to have to start off the round but the good news for him is that that only took four minutes <laughs> yes so plenty of time left to finish the match yep so I think for things to go differently for Andrew here he's just going to need to actually have you know a, a playable hand maybe get some energy on the board set up set things up for uh, the future which he did not even get to play a second turn, of course, in that match. So things couldn't have really gone a whole lot worse. And for Drew, we didn't even see him have to play the Dedenne in his hand. So he he can go deeper than that. He just, but he had the win, so he just went for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, checking out both players' prizes here. Triple Acceleration and the Snorlax VMAX from Andrew. A couple Ultra Balls, a couple Search Cards from Drew. All right, Andrew going first again. All right, get some Pokemon this time, man. Let's see it. <laughs> Immediately going to go ahead and throw down two extra Pokemon on the bench and has to pass. Now, are we going to see another explosive turn from Drew here? This this does so, so much remind me of just old Expanded with all of these, you know, Shamans and Trainers Males and just so much of it, this, these explosive starts. Not starting with a Battle Compressor here immediately, so Drew's uh, start might be a little bit slower than we're used to based on that single game. But we are going to see an Ultra Ball, which can start training into those Dedenes, those Shamans, etc. So really starts here. Yep. And of course, we will not see the, the a similar strategy as, as game one. Maybe he decides to go and, and do some spread, but that Snorlax V does have a lot more hit points, 220. So it's going to be a little more, a little more difficult for Drew to, to get through this big guy. Yeah, not going to just be able to straight up knock it out, which again brings us back to the conversation we were having a couple minutes ago. How does Drew's deck function past, you know, the first, the second, the third turn of the game? Is it something where he can put enough pressure, disrupt his opponent enough with those early knockouts that he that Koho can carry him the rest of the way, or does he need more help? 
Yeah, we do see some of those uh, specialty items in Drew's hand. He does have that target whistle. So, of course, you can see the strategy starting to line up. If you're playing against a Shaman deck, you can go ahead and just take them all down with the bird trio, take all your prize cards and win the game there. But does that mean that he maybe wants to hold on to that for a later turn? We'll really just have to see. Looks like Ultra Ball finds the Dene here. So, Drew not liking his hand as it stands. Trainer's male gonna find a battle compressor. It's almost the best thing you can find with a hobo deck. <laughs> Essentially. So battle compressor is gonna happen now. And this is just I, I would just imagine we're gonna see a lot of the same uh exact strategy sort of executed. Um where it's just I want my hoes in the discard pile, I want energy in the discard pile, and I want to be able to make big early attacks. Yeah, I like the strategy of going ahead and throwing away all the Ho-Oh first, especially if you don't have the second Battle Compressor ready to go. Just because if you find energy cards, it's a lot easier to use them to some sort of effect than it is to just draw a Ho-Oh. You'd have to then find a way to discard it, and it gets a little more awkward. Yeah, it has to feel really bad to just draw a ho naturally in this deck. So all of them are going straight to the discard pile there. Float stone up the Shaman just so it can move when it wants to, and here's a Dedede. It looks like he did lose one of those Ninja Boy, but of course has VS Seeker, so we'll be able to find that later on if he needs to. It's a good place to have at least one in the discard pile, but don't want to lose all of them too early. It looks like Trainer's Mail here does not hit something immediately useful, so now Drew might have to think about what he wants to do, if he want, what he wants to take, if anything. Yeah, I think he was looking for Ultra Ball or something there. His hand is kind of awkward. He does have three energies hold, that he's holding on to. It looks like no true way to discard them just yet. Yeah, he, it seems like he really just wants to have kind of a, to keep the chain going with Quick Balls and Ultra Balls and Battle Compressors and other things, but I think it might just end here. Yep. Just a little bit awkward. He's even considering just grabbing the, the VS Seeker. I think that's what he's going to actually have to end up doing. Not the type of card you want to use right now, especially if you want to discard the rest of the cards in your hand. But nope, it just takes nothing. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, now it's, we kind of, uh, from this, Mahone probably is thinking, all right, maybe I am going to get a couple turns in this game. Yeah, maybe I'll actually get to make game actions. <laughs> all right, Ninja Boy. The Dene is gone. I see a Rangaroo. All right, he's going to go fishing, it looks like. He's going to try to see if maybe he can get one nice card off the top to help himself out here. Does, of course, have that Primate Wisdom. So even just Ultra Ball or uh, um, a Shaman, something, Ultra Ball. Like, Any card. There's, there's like so many different items that chain all together, get you an Ultra Ball, and then this hand just goes. Yeah, and let's see. He can do it. The swap. Finds a quick, a quick ball, ball, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other one I was looking for. Yep, that'll, that'll get the job done. <laughs> oh, man. That feels so bad if you're Andrew, too. You, you, you know, your opponent has exactly one draw and they hit it. Is he done? No. Nope. <laughs> We're just beginning. All right, so the chain continues. Quick ball discards a lightning energy. Looks like it's going to find a shaman. That shaman's going to drum four cards. Looks like, not, not sure what the other two cards in his hand are. Yeah, if he did have some extra energies, he could go ahead and use that Ho-Oh Rebirth and then attach for the turn and draw an extra card. But it, I think it is important for him to go ahead and get those energies onto his attacking Pokemon. So we might not see the energy attachment just yet. Yeah, it looks like we're not going to. We're just going to see the setup. Four cards. Oh, he's just going to have to keep fishing. All right, Battle Compressor. Yeah, looks like that's going to be the call there. Can't grab the other trainer's mail, so just going to keep on moving i'm not sure what the energy counts are exactly but i know it can't be that many so it looks like he does not sure what he has in his discard pile but i know he has the one water in his hand um so it looks like unless they're in the prizes he should be able to get the full suite into the discard pile this turn yeah he does have one lightning in discard here so he could go ahead and put two more oh he has the water as well oh, he has so. water as well okay so he's good he's, he's golden yeah so there's the fire there's kind of the missing piece there yeah, and now we can do, can really just consider, like, is, are there some cards that I don't want to see again? Uh, maybe I do want to work on a second Ho-Oh, so I want to get some energies in. Uh, just curious to see what he feels is the optimal line, and it looks like he's going to go ahead and just start tossing some cards he doesn't want. Yep, another utility of Battle Compressor, of course, is just, it's not just cards that you want to find in your discard pile. It's not just, you know, one of supporters or anything. It can just be cards you don't want to draw again. You can thin out your deck. That effect is just so powerful, and that's why Battle Compressor has been so good from so many different angles for so long. 
So just looking at how this is starting to map out, we have seen Drew already use his supporter for the turn to stay alive and get that uh, Orangaroo going. So we could see the Ho-Oh come out and then just start attacking, maybe get some chip damage onto the Snorlax, some relevant chip damage uh, that eventually could turn into a bird trio having some success. And uh, Drew is not skipping a beat. Of course, he's going to hit that opening heads. Yep. Not going to take us on a roller coaster. Uh, instead, just going to go ahead and have that rainbow burn set up. Yeah, didn't even have to try, just hits it fully. And again, the the, the uh, awkward bit of this deck is use, having to use that supporter, like you said, before you can uh, Ninja Boy into the bird trio. But it looks like he's not even going to risk the hoe. He's just going to leave it on the bench. Yeah, it's just a nod of respect to what Andrew's able to do here. He's He knows that, of course, that Snorlax V can come out and one triple uh, acceleration can really knock out just about anything. So going to make Andrew have a few more pieces if he wants to cash in on this, this ho -Oh. And now Andrew has to kind of develop his board without um, exposing too many shamans or too many just low HP Pokemon like that. He doesn't want things to go as they went last game. So let's see if he can actually put that together. Yeah, there is, of course, the strategy where you use all of the shaman, uh, just get yourself going, and then maybe you field blower away that sky field and just take away all of the relevant big uh, shaman po that, that could get knocked off of the board. Uh, just leave yourself with a bunch of one prizers and maybe like Tapu Lele's just because it's not gonna, it has enough hit points to take that hit. Yeah, exactly. Lots of options here um, for Andrew Mahone. Really glad we're getting to, to see one of the new Sword and Shield decks. I think Snorlax V Max is uh, not the most played deck, but definitely one that was hyped a lot going into this tournament. I think that's just a, a great card and can do a lot here. And we'll have to see if it ends up coming out on top here in Collinsville. All right, so for Andrew, with that Winona, he does get to choose some of these extra Pokemon that we don't usually see on a supporter card. Usually they just grab, uh, when you're grabbing in multiples, you're grabbing basic Pokemon, but instead can grab himself that Chinchino, get himself some draw going, also has his VMAX lined up, and he is going to use that Shaman. So uh, at the end of this whole setup, we're probably going to see Andrew hoping to grab that Field Blower just because he doesn't want these Shamans sticking around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely not something you want to leave kind of exposed, but you are you do have to just kind of play into this now to set up your own strategy. All right, so he's going to continue to push on this board now at six. Can keep going a little further with a quick ball too. Of course, it gets scary if you start over benching here with the with the shamans if you don't already have a strategy lined up. But of course, can use that to Dene has the hit points to be able to withstand the bird trio and continue to push him through his deck. So it looks like that's a pretty good choice there. Yeah, well, the one the one shaman is not obviously not exactly where you want to be, but is okay. Um, but yeah, you definitely have to be careful not to bench too many more. And there's a Dene. All right, still haven't seen energy. Oh, that last card the last there. last card was a triple acceleration. It was getting scary. Andrew taking us on a number count, giving us up to seven. Has a little more push in his hand if he wants to. Really just going to decide if it's worth it. Going to take a look at the discard pile of Drew, consider where he wants to go from here. He does have that Storm XV Max, of course. He has the Triple Acceleration Energy, considering what he wants to discard here, if anything, for these Ultra Balls or Quick Balls. Might bring out that Altaria. Yep, he does have Quick Ball and the Ultra, so he can just remove the whole hand if he wanted to, if he wants to keep pushing. Looks like he is going to start things off with a quick ball. So he wants to go a little bit further, at least. What do, what do you think he's trying to really draw to here? What do you think is changing? Well, I saw the uh, the, the execute, and that, that's a good strategy. Always just to, to get that in the discard pile whenever. Uh, but right now, Andrew has that, that energy lined up to be able to do something relevant this turn. But maybe he needs to find something for next turn. So he could be trying to give himself a, a good hand to work with, or maybe he just wants to hold on to a supporter so that he has something to keep going. Because we could see some of his... Um, helpful Pokemon start to get removed off the board next turn. It looks like Andrew considering uh, playing another, playing an Ultra Ball or something, but it looks like he's just going to go ahead and shuffle his deck. Note to his opponent, he's going to make some actions before then. Kind of draws his, he, uh, he goes ahead and makes do. Does have that Snorlax down, so we'll have uh, access to another 
uh, Snorlax VMAX if something wild were to happen, but I don't think we're going to see 340 hit points disappear anytime soon. No, no, I don't think that's uh, really something that this deck is capable of. You see Shaman moving into the active position, the active spot, as it were, before Drew starts his next turn. He does have uh, more ho -Oh. I think he has more energy in the discard pile. He, I know he has access to Ninja Boy, too, if he has a Versus Seeker in his hand. His, his hands are, looks like it's really going nowhere. He also has no energy there just yet, so he could use the compressor to get the energies in. But I think, once again, this is just him trying to thin out his deck so that Oranguru can bail him out of here. So they, you gotta, you can, there's been a lot of pressure on this Oranguru this game. So far, it's worked out for him, but I'm not sure if he can do it every single time. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> just one more card. All right, we're seeing a bird trio hit a discard pile along with that fire energy. And yeah, just going to go ahead and do two energies, just deciding, you know, I, I just really want... The, these are more, much more valuable in my discard pile for potential future ho-ohs. Um, got to do something here. Got to thin as much as I can. And it might be... The pressure might be on a Rangaroo once again. Well, we saw him do so much in the standard format is one of those very helpful cards is it going to be able to cash out for drew here just needs one more helpful piece to maybe keep this going we get him a ton of prize cards ninja boy would be and huge what was it Couldn't didn't look good <laughs> based on the body language it I'm looked shiny was not good yeah, I think it, it could be a bird tree. Uh, yeah, I think it's yeah. the, I think it's just a bird tree. He's just gonna go ahead and go ahead and concede immediately. So game game two lasting a little bit longer than game one did, <laughs> but uh, Andrew Mahone tying things up here, and that's kind of you know we 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 asked how good the Drew's late game was going to be. I didn't expect the late game to be you know turn two or three, but I proved that you know maybe without that big explosive start, maybe without the right string of cards, uh, he, he can't really put things together in the same way. Yeah, I feel like Drew's strategy is just. <laughs> Try to take four prize cards on that big opener, and then you can maybe get something going with Target Whistle and a Guzma and uh, take that last knockout on a Shaman for the sixth prize. But anything outside of that is kind of awkward. He really doesn't have an answer to, to one big Snorlax. And we saw even he didn't feel like risking that Ho-Oh there, which could have got some chip damage onto the Snorlax. Just says, that's not my strategy. I can't get through this guy. I need to pick things off the bench. Yeah, it does not matter. ho is not doing a relevant amount of damage that would you know change my clock at all so i drew's deck seems to be very focused on one thing and if that one thing doesn't work out in the early turns or that one thing is just not good against your opponent's strategy i'm not sure how um how good you can how far you can actually go here but we did show in game one that, that, that there's certain hands Andrew could draw, there's certain combination of cards that can be on the board that can be very beneficial for Drew. So this really, this matchup seems like it really comes down to the development in the opening turn of right. the game. This is literally just the first turn, maybe the second one, and how um, and from there you'd be able to predict the winner so many times just based off of what the what the first development of the few turns was like for each player. Yeah, if I see Mancino in a ponyta, I'm probably just gonna hand the trophy over to Drew at this point because <laughs> he can beat those all day but uh when when andrew does get that set up if on that first turn he does have access to maybe some quick balls or something to get him moving through finding big pokemon i feel like he does have a slight advantage in this matchup yeah so seeing a lot of uh you know both the the andrew's deck the new sword and shield pokemon the uh Bird trio not from sword and shield but again a, a you know newer release here haven't seen a lot of hasn't seen a lot of play really right uh, so really interesting to see how much the expanded format has changed and developed from dallas here into collinsville and we're gonna go to a, what is definitely gonna be a pretty exciting game three yeah pretty excited uh, to get down to the last bit here see what these hands have for us does andrew have enough pokemon to keep himself in the game in this final game three here might end up only being exciting for one player, but it's going to be exciting for all of us. And <laughs> We're going to sure. love it. <laughs> There's a 1-1 one, one, uh, Snorlax line prized for Andrew. Do you see one Shaman at double water, and he does only play three, so maybe could have a little bit of uh, troubles finding that last one, but of course, Battle Compressor is a pretty good friend to have. All right, so Andrew up first has that Snorlax V. Drops the Sudo Widow, and again, doesn't seem like he has really anything going on, so he's going to consider what he can do here. Can Shaman <laughs> for one. It's a rescue stretcher. I think this is good. <laughs> this is 
This is kind of where Andrew wants to be. He, he made it a little bit awkward for Drew to, to push with a ton of Shaman because he has that pseudo Wudo there, and he has his huge uh, Snorlax in the active spot. So Yeah, I, th I think the Snorlax just, it sounds silly, but starting with the Snorlax, just, or having the Snorlax in general, just changes so much. Yeah. You know, we see the percentages certainly start to flip there, but Drew is not discouraged. He actually has a, a pretty solid opener for himself there, starting off with that Ultra Ball. So Ultra Ball puts a ho and a Fire Energy in the discard pile. This is gonna where, going to be where he discovers that he did prize all but that single um, Water Energy, which could come back to hurt him a bit. But he does have access to that single one, of course. Looks like a Dedenne is going to be found off the Ultra Ball. Yep, so just not knowing the rest of the hand, but seeing the today makes you think that maybe he has some other pieces of the puzzle that are uh, in that hand that he'd like to just discard early. Uh, could see maybe some of those extra energy cards or maybe another ho -Oh perhaps. Just, or maybe just a bunch of cards he doesn't like. Just get these out of the way, and I'll just draw shamans from this point on. Yeah, getting a quick flash of him, it seems like it's mostly just cards he doesn't really need. So not the best uh, opening hand here, but again, the Dene can change so much, and we have seen that over these past two games that Drew's strategy is really dependent on just kind of the chain going. The Dene is finding shamans, finding battle compressors, finding more search Pokemon, just... Um, you just want to keep, he really just wants to keep that sort of things going and keep making game actions. And a Ringaroo. And a Ringaroo, of course. <laughs> the all-star. Can't forgive him. All right. So off of this hand, Drew does find another battle compressor. So Ken gets to get, he can get more of those ho -Oh and maybe another energy card in there for himself. And he does a little more going with that trainer's mail. But once again, he kind of just found some weird pieces and might need to get bailed out one more time if trainer's mail isn't successful. It looks like he's going for a slightly different strategy with the trainer's, with the um, battle compressor here than he has in the past. He has Ho-Ho, the lightning energy, and the water energy. So now he has the full suite of energies in the discard pile, but only the one ho -Oh. Yeah, so we'll, he will have the second one I'm sorry, now. he does have two ho -Oh. okay. But it's, it's, it, it, you're right. It is riskier than his normal strategy, which is I'm going to give myself three flips. He says, I got to do it on two this time. Uh, just because getting the energies right now is pretty important. He's only, he only ever needed the one flip, so I guess giving himself an extra one here is probably <laughs> fine. He, he doesn't need it. Well, he's going to go ahead and try now. Oh. Missed the first. Missed oh, the second. Oh, missed both of them. <laughs> That's scary. All right, maybe, maybe we spoke a little too soon here. He didn't, he, he, we didn't call it out yet for him. We didn't, we, we didn't curse it for him that's, yet. So. That's true. All right, the, the Ultra Ball was found, so he does have a little more push here, can thin out this hand, grab another Shaman, and start to go. Does have a Float Stone, too, so really could get this hand low if he wants to. Looks like Ultra Ball is what he's going to take, just now deciding how to discard. Does he have the Ninja Boy in the discard? It looks like he does, so he could just hold that VS Seeker and draw himself five cards, and I think that's what he's lining up for here. Yep, after some decision, it looks like that's what's going to happen. Bird Trio hitting the discard pile, just saying, okay, I need to keep this Versus Seeker. Yeah, it would have it would have been so helpful for Drew if he were to hit one of those flips because he could have went ahead and used the Ninja Boy, got the Pokemon that he wanted, doesn't have to see it potentially drawn off of the Shaman here, which could be awkward. So missing those flips could end up coming up pretty crucial, even if Drew were to find the other ho -Oh and flip it. Uh, correctly, just the ordering that this is going down in could really hurt him here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the, the risks. We, we didn't see it come up in game one or two, but the hoe does require a flip. It does. It is a risk of just not happening. Looks like he found Ultra Ball, so he does have a little more. <laughs> I think I've said this before. <laughs> the chain keeps going. <laughs> We've been here once or twice. Has an additional energy, but he, he needs to find back-to-back -back discards so he can get the ho -Oh in there or, or to find the battle compressor. Maybe if like the Ultra Ball was paired with a Quick Ball and then he, he'd be able to just push through. Maybe use a Rangaroo first and try to just find the discarding effect or something, you know? Yeah, just, he, it, it's really... Missing those ho -Oh flips was just so awkward and the way that these hands have turned, um, have turned out has made things really awkward. Here's an Ultra Ball getting, getting rid of a, a Shaman and a Ninja Boy, it looked like. Finding yet another Shaman. And he's also running out of bench space, too. So he, he is limited here. Uh, you're really going to have to find it off of this last Shaman. Yeah, this is really the only thing he can 
uh, really benched that will allow him to then ho, then, you know, Bertrier didn't do anything. Considering here, he's looking to use a Ranger's ability first, just deciding what card to put back. Well, being that he's already denied, probably makes sense to go ahead and put that back over. Does draw a Skyfield, so he does have a, another card he can play to power up the Shaman. All right, so here he'd love to find that Battle Compressor. Does, does find it. All right. He does find the Battle Compressor. Not a whole lot of other playable cards, though. Did any and some energy, so... Looks like it's going to be all up to this. Oh, this good, good, good. He's got, he's got the four, so now okay. he's got two more flips. And right. we, we've never seen him miss two flips in a row before. <laughs> no, that just <laughs> if, doesn't happen. So he's, he's set. <laughs> this is easy. All right. Well, it's going to come down to this. Uh, that you know the, the chain links together, maybe not in the exact most optimal way. But he did put it all together. Energy is in the discard pile. Hose in the discard pile. He has access to the ninja boy. Here comes the third rebirth flip of the turn. Off screen for us. Oh, oh no. Tails. Last one. Oh. Okay. Oh. oh, okay. All right, it took all four, <laughs> but Drew got there. Ho oh, comes back into play. Just imagine missing all four. That'd be terrifying. That'd be so I expect we just see another auto scoop like we saw. There's the energy from hand versus seeker for Ninja Boy. All right, we do see Ninja Boy coming down. That means we're going to see the Bird Trio, the Mulcher, Zapdos, Articuno in play four energies. And Drew is lining up some knockouts. Andrew going ahead and going to take another read of it just to make sure, you know, I know it said end the game in game one, but uh, let's just actually see yeah, what it says. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just went along with it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, looks like all plays have been made. Going to see a big attack here. All right, yeah, he is going to go ahead and use his GX attack. Sky Legends can go ahead and take three prize cards, and we will start to see Drew going with that alternate strategy from here on out, I think. It's going to be tough to take a, a VMAX po uh, knockout here, so maybe he is going to have to start to target down some other things, uh, use those, those Guzmas uh, efficiently, and steal the last three prizes. Colorus was the draw. Or Andrew Mahone here as he attempts to rebuild. Looks like Rescue Stretcher finds Sudowoodo. Oh, Sudowoodo is a good card for him to have here. It does limit Drew a lot in that he doesn't really get to uh, push through his deck at any point and get his Pokemon into play. So uh, that can be pretty beneficial for him just to lock him in if he doesn't take a knockout here. Really just depends how the rest of this works for Andrew. This is also pretty scary to be using a Colrus yeah, for four, four cards. And never what you want to see from Andrew. So these next four cards are really going to be make or break for him. He's he's already in a position where he's behind on prizes, behind on board, but kind of has, uh, you know, this this Snorlax VMAX that we're not sure if Drew's deck can really break through. But we're going down to just four cards. I mean, a bad hand here could spell the end of the game. Yeah. This is this is pretty terrifying for Andrew. Would love to see him chain together some of those Shaman, like he's seen his opponent do so often. Really just going to need to find the cards here. Does find Quick Ball, so it's going to be able to keep this going for him. But the rest of it is not good. There's not already a Skyfield in play, and he can't use Colrus again. So we do see Quick Ball come down, the only real playable card in Andrew's hand. Just taking a peek over at Drew's hand as well. He... Looks like he doesn't have much con to, to combat this. So maybe Andrew will have a few turns to, to s sneak his way out of here, but it's going to be pretty scary, especially with that damage already on your Snorlax. Yeah, between the, the energy going on to the Bird Trio and then they getting shuffled back in, it does seem like sort of Drew has this one big explosive turn and then we'll probably need another turn to rebuild. Yeah. Um, especially with l lacking the exact types of energy he needed. All right, and so Andrew keeping things going here. Quick ball finds a Dedene. Skyfield already in play. Colorist, of course, supporter has already been used. Six fresh cards. Does find himself an energy, but oh man, I don't see anything else. No, I, I, I don't see either. Just a bunch of supporters he can't really play. Does have that Mancino, so he will have access to maybe some some draw in the following turns maybe just tries to limit his opponent here yeah using that that field blower to take away the retreat for drew 
could buy himself an extra turn, but oh, passing with this Snorlax active. Not where you want to be, but it's what he has to do. Andrew Mahone just passes the turn back. You mentioned that um, you mentioned that Drew's hand needed a little bit of help here, but still just just having to basically do nothing on your turn from Andrew after you know you have this big turn where you get attacked, your opponent makes, takes a bunch of prizes, deals some damage to your V Pokemon. You really wanted to be able to respond in some way, and the cards just weren't not there for him. Yeah, so he ha so Drew has almost every energy that he wants in his hand, which is really weird because he wants them in his discard pile. Right. He could use Dedenne and get all of them in his discard pile, but then he's Sudowoodle locked out. So he doesn't have room to, to get onto, the, uh, onto the, the bench there for himself. So he's just going to go ahead and maybe use a, a Sky Return strategy over two turns. I, I guess that's, that's what he's planning to do. He, do, he does a uh, Haranguru and find the ho to a discard though off the Haranguru. Easy. <laughs> Easy game. Well, Drew does find himself that target whistle, so that strategy of stealing some knockouts is there for him. But I don't think he has the pieces just yet. It does look at, like it's going to take two or three turns to really start rolling here. Yep, here's another trainer's mail. Just digging a little bit deeper into his deck is Drew. Considering taking the quick ball there. Again, you know, benches. Benches locked full at this point. Yeah, he, we also saw two of those Floatstone fall on the previous turn, and Drew does only have three, so access to one more for the rest of the game. And we could see Retreat being a pretty relevant thing here, as it really is just an extra turn every time for Andrew. But Drew, Drew does have a little bit of time, though, right? He'll, he can, he'll pass here, he'll, you know, Andrew can take a knockout, and then maybe Drew can try to set things up for the next turn, but that Target Whistle and the Shaman, that will be the game. I'm not sure exactly, you know, what the contents of his hand and discard pile will work out to, if that can actually happen, but I mean, it could be as early as next turn that Drew just sweeps the rest of the prizes. Hey, he's just forced to pass here. It looks like Versus Seeker was the draw for Andrew Mahone. Let's have that Winona, so Ken get himself that Shinshino along with a few other helpful pieces. Uh, Ken, of course, find his evolution, that V-Max. Just being able to search for whatever he really needs here, just like, just like you said. Snorlax, Shinshino. Gonna go ahead and take some time to reference the hand, see exactly what he'll need here. Ditto Prism Star is the answer. So piecing this together for Drew, he has to, if he does get knocked out on this turn, he has at least the retreat lined up with the Shaman. He can get his energies in play and use Ninja Boy, and he can take one two prize knockout, get himself to one prize, and then he's gonna have to have maybe a ho -Oh plus Guzma play lined up to take an easier knockout, maybe maybe the ditto or something that's lined up for him. So probably two turns out from Drew being able to get through. And from this point on, I don't think we see Andrew really missing on anything big if his hand continues to work for him here. He should be able to go two prizes, two prizes, two prizes the whole way through. So Andrew's on that three turn clock and Drew's on a really risky two turn clock if everything works out. Yeah, it's just so, oh, and Andrew has to pass the turn back. It's just so weird for Drew to, uh, have to put things together. Like his, his clock is just so, so different because it requires so many different moving parts. Right, so the fact that Andrew didn't actually get his clock off actually slowed down uh, Drew Kate's clock because he needs that Pokemon out of the active spot because it's really hard to retreat right now. Yeah, there's a lot of floatstones in the discard pile for Drew. One at a time, we'll see if Oranger is able to find him the piece does find himself Battle Compressor, so that could be a pretty relevant way to maybe get that last Ho-Oh uh, lined up if he does need to find a third attacker. But I, at this point, he just needs to find better cards. They're not coming together. The past few turns of this game have just been awkward for, for both players. Just kind of... <laughs> you do it. No, <laughs> really, you yeah, do I, it. I want you to act first. I need this to Dene out if I want to win. No, I, I don't have anything, man. We see a second attachment to the Shaman there. Yeah, coming into this event, if you told me that someone was going to manually attach twice to do 30, I was just, well, that guy probably lost. Yeah. But <laughs> Drew does have a pretty great strategy here just to give himself that extra bench space, get himself out of this weird spot. Uh, it could actually end up working out for him. 
You have to do what you have to do in these tough spots. You know, it's easy enough to play the game when you've you've gone through your deck and you know exactly how it works and you're kind of executing your strategy perfectly. But then you get in these awkward situations where you have you have no float stones. You have a Pokemon stuck in the active position. You're you're battle compressoring just to get cards you don't want to draw at this point. It's just uh, these are the really the tough situations where you have to kind of think about what you want to do. And even if it's not a great play, even if it makes you feel bad, you have to do it just to up the percentages that you can actually win. Well, little by little. Something that we also haven't talked about is that 30 damage is actually pretty relevant here. Uh, if Drew decided to go for a Snorlax VMAX knockout, if this were the Pokemon that Andrew decided to commit to, then maybe he does get to that magical 340 just because he has a 210 damage attack uh, in combination with that extra 30 would just be just enough to get him over the hump. And it looks like Another triple acceleration was the draw for Andrew. It's only the discard pile. Looks like his has pretty positive body language here. He does have the Versus Seeker in hand. Yep, so he does have access to that AZ. Could remove that Snorlax from play if he wanted to. Also eyeing up Winona, so he could just evolve it and then figure it out later if, that, if it did end up uh, becoming an issue. He could see Drew commit that 30 damage onto the Snorlax VMAX and then go, okay, now it's in range of the bird trio. I need to get him out of here. Yeah, now I'll just save it. And I think this is the this makes sense to do from Andrew's position. Right. You just wanna you wanna be able to push what you're trying to do rather than just take an entire turn off before you really need to. Oh, this is starting to line up for Andrew Mahone. Does have multiple energies, so Ken starts to see the, the, the stars aligning. Three knockouts is all he needs to do from this point forward if he can line them up on GX and EX Pokemon. Yeah, just, a, just a simple enough game of trying to make sure you have the resources, take the, take the easy knockouts every turn. Of course, Drew's going to have something to say about that. But Andrew's got to try to execute his strategy. That, that is the problem that comes when you're playing a deck uh, like Drew Cape because you know exactly how much damage output he has every turn. So if you're, if you're playing the math right, if you have cards like AZ available to you, you can just make sure that you're just one turn ahead each time. Yeah, just be, 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 aim, being able to heal just a little bit of damage, being able to just set Drew back a whole other turn can just cost the entire game. I and mean, we're talking about how each player is on this small clock where they're trying to do something every single turn. And every time that you miss that, it's just huge. Finds a third energy. So all three attacks now lined up. Also has that target whistle. So if things ever got weird, didn't find the Pokemon he wanted, he could uh, also make the pseudo Wudo uh, benching a little more awkward uh, if Drew were to leave a spot open at any point. Looks like Andrew now just consulting what's in his hand, making sure he knows how the play is going to work out, and just passes again. You do it. <laughs> yeah. Again, once again, I, I need you to act first. Yeah, he's like, what, what are you going to do, man? You, you can do 30, and I'm just going to pull it up eventually. So uh, wait. unless there is a surprise card coming from Drew in a, like a super scoop up, I don't think we're going to see anything wild just yet. Yeah, I think this is this is really smart play by Andrew to really discipline play. Just saying, like, I don't, I don't, I want you to have to act first. I want you to have to kind of expose yourself first. I know you. I don't have to knock this out, and I'm just gonna wait. Make sure that AZ can heal as much damage as possible. So for Drew, he is he does have that computer search, that aspect of choice for him to use this game. And he could potentially find maybe something disruptive if he wanted to go for N, if he thinks his opponent's holding on to all those cards, holding on to that way to use the AZ. Maybe he sees that as like the big alternative strategy. Could use that as a way to, to maybe uh, fix this game for him. But I'm, also, <laughs> he has attached a lot of energy. We do see Ninja Boy, maybe. Maybe there's, yeah. there's some line of play where you just say, all right, let's just... Let's just do it the old-fashioned way, Shaman, get in there. Yeah, looks like that might be what's going on here. We see the computer search. He is eyeing up that ninja boy. I mean, from, from what he has left in his deck, there are not many tricks left. Just a face-up ninja boy there off the computer search. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to show your opponent, but we are at that point of the game where it's like, you know what's happening, I know what's happening. Let's see whose is better. Definitely not the way <laughs> this game has been much, much different than either of the first two games. This game kind of going to the nitty gritty, seeing both players have to go through a bunch of their decks, play a bunch of turns out, and really grind to the very end here. So Drew does have to put that 
Bird Trio back onto his deck so that he can start to do his Ninja Boy strategy. They're trying to figure out. He's like, hey, shuffle the card that I was about to draw. Uh, so they are they are, they have figured it out. Yeah. The cut hadn't happened before the draw had happened, and Drew was still holding on to the card that should have been cut. All right, we um, looks like we have figured all of this out. <laughs> Ninja Boy coming down here. It's on the top of the deck. <laughs> it's only only option left. But is this some? It's not enough. There's there's no energy acceleration going on here. He gets this into play, but he has Mars Shadow as well. Okay, does so does have Mars Shadow. Is that going to make a relevant difference? Yeah, it doesn't even so. decide to go with it just yet. Just going for the Bird Trio. Another attachment there. And she has to pass again. This is the slowest expanded I've ever seen. <laughs> passing back and forth, passing back and forth. Ultra ball up the top four. Andrew. All right, so Andrew does really need to start doing something at this point if he wants to come out with a win. He is getting close on time. Looks like he is eyeing up Guzma here. So maybe Drew going a little too early. Yeah, Andrew just making sure he has the Guzma here. There's a Snorlax VMAX. Andrew definitely moving quickly, just trying to, uh, looks like he knows what he wants to do and now is the turn to go for it. Yep, that seventh Pokemon hits the bench, does find that Guzma here. Looks like he will be targeting that bird trio. Does Drew have enough to come back from this point? We've seen a lot of Ninja Boy hitting the, the, the discard pile scene play. Drew also has very limited cards in hand and ways to draw out of this. His bench space is limited too, so everything's starting to turn over to Mahone now. And Andrew, very disciplined in his play. Uh, Andrew Mahone, of course, very disciplined in his play, just waiting for the right moment to um, kind of piece things together here. There is the Guzma. Looks like he's just doing some quick math. There's the Guzma, the, the fully uh, healed Snorlax V Max coming into the active position. He did discard one of the energies. Now there's the Alolan Muck. Just players just... So yeah, I was, I was counting and I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> are we are we there yet? <laughs> uh, we have oh. 60 plus 30 coming down. Oh, wow. And like he did not get there. He needed one more Pokemon. He's going to do 270 damage. Wow. A Andrew Mahone just maybe playing a little bit too quickly. Did not did not count up all of the uh, the damage correctly. And wow, you, you can tell, oh, you can man. tell he's just yeah. devastated. Wow. I don't know if he had access to even like execute I, in his discard pile. He was saying, I had the propagate right there. Oh, yeah, he says he, he had the Pokemon. He just discarded it when he didn't want to. He could have he could have played around that. Wow, yeah, he just uh, uh, he, he can't do. Yeah, <laughs> let's make let's make sure we're all following the rules. <laughs> Hold up now. Come on. There's a lot going on here. Uh, Andrew Mahone, just a, a, a play mistake there, just just discarded the wrong card, did not have the proper amount of damage there, miscounted that. What was supposed to be a very big turn to swing the game, it's not going to quite work out from a heartbreaking moment there if you're Andrew Mahone. Well, we'll see if it has any impact on the rest of this game now. We, Andrew did also discard one of his energies. Yes, he so did. Now he's down two. And does Drew just say, all right, I'm going to, I need to buy a little more time. I'm, I'll, I'll let you take a few prizes here and there, but I'm not going to give you the win yet. I mean, thankfully for Andrew, I think that's really just exactly what's going to happen here. He's just, all right, here's my Dene. I'm going to attach on the bench and pass again. I, you know, I just, just because, just because uh, that worked out better than it could have for me doesn't mean it worked out great. All right. So we see there's 270 damage on, uh, 
the bird trio. The Guzma does come up, so Chantino's actually going to get to yeah, do so some Chantino's work. Chantino's going to take a big knockout here. He doesn't just make do, ladies and gents. He gets it done. And there's a big knockout. <laughs> Player's just going to go ahead and triple check the amount of damage that's happening. <laughs> Are we again. sure? And that's half of Andrew's prizes. So minor setback from that last turn, but Chinchino pulls uh, pulls it out here for Andrew. Mahone, not really sure what Drew can put together here. Yep, so really just seeing how this is going to work out. It just Drew just has to deal 50. This is his attacker of choice now is that Dedene. Uh, does Andrew have the way out? He does have the float stone, so he sh should have a knockout if he can find one of his uh, triple acceleration energies. We know that he does play multiple special charge, so maybe he could start to find a way to draw into those. And it looks like that is going to be the plan for him now. He does also have one of those triple acceleration in deck. Yeah, that's the, that's the last one left. And then just we'll be relying on special charge. I does, he, does he have... A, a, a way to get through this. It looks like N is going to be the call. Drew says, thank you. My hand has been awful, but he won't be very thankful if Andrew is able to find his way out of it yeah, if so, he finds that energy. Wow, once again, these players just having to make these really weird plays, <laughs> these really low-impact plays, but they just what they have to do, each player drawing three cards. And like you said, Drew thankful for it. Andrew just hoping he can find an energy here to keep things going as we... It looks like time is just going to be called. Yeah, we just reached time just now. This makes Andrew turn zero, so he will he have to try. Does energy. find the energy here. So can take the knockout. Would have loved to see the special charge this turn around, so he could get those energies available to him. Doesn't find it just yet. So finding this last prize could actually be All pretty right. weird. Andrew with one prize left, but can he put it together? This has been such a uh, difference from the first two games. This has been such a, a uh, an exciting game. Is it has been exciting, but it's kind of interesting. It's kind of weird to say that with how much passing and yeah, how the, much the, the ebb and flow happened. of this has been has been so wild. As yeah. we, we really just went to the peak in the first four <laughs> minutes and. Man, and we've just been going all over the place right down to the very end here for Andrew if he's able to pull it off. Don't see the win happening just yet over on Drew's side. It almost seems impossible at this point for him. But can he hold on to get himself that one extra uh, match point here? Yeah, I'm not, I, I think Drew, again, is just playing for the draw here. His deck is very thin, doesn't think it has a whole lot of relevant cards. Andrew is trying to piece together a win. I think it should be turn two here if, if our clock was right. Turn two of time. All right, so Andrew is going to give himself as many outs as possible, does have a VS Seeker, so could go ahead and use maybe a cold wrist draw as many cards as he can, find that special charge, and then try to make do to, to draw into his, his plan here. Does go ahead and grab that cold wrist, so he's going to start uh, moving. We see eight, so he's going to draw ten cards here. Don't know how many cards he has left in deck, but he really could just draw just about everything. I mean, I've got to imagine it's everything. And also, just, just this probably won't come up now that Andrew is... Uh, Andrew is drawing this many here, but the players did have a little bit of a time extension, so time has not been called quite yet. All right. But even so if Andrew doesn't hit it here, he could have another turn. I mean, we'll see. Look, yeah, Drew says, I think the writing's on the wall. Just go ahead and draw your cards, man. It's going to be 10 cards, a potentially 12 to 15 card deck. Who knows? It looks like time, that body language tells me that time did just expire here. Find Dowsy Machine and Special Charge, multiple Special Charge, it looks like, as well. Can he do a little more in the way of filling his deck? Yeah, he's going to go ahead and just put everything in yeah, there. Best has, odds possible for Make Do. Here we go. I don't, I don't know how many cards, but there can't be more than eight or nine. So we do see Quick Ball, Dowsy Machine as well is another way to look through. He's gonna, he has, oh my, yeah, like I seven, think it's almost like, impossible with the seven and four of them are hits. And yeah, Drew's gonna pick it up. He, yeah, knows he just that. concedes. Andrew Mahone, what a match. Congratulations to Andrew Mahone. Uh, winning this match here t took a, through a lot of adversity, getting, getting turn one in the first game, having some miscalculations in the third game. But Andrew Mahone was able to take down the victory with his Snorlax VMAX deck versus the um, unconventional sort of bird trio ho -Oh ex deck. <laughs> well, Not something I thought we'd be saying here today. Yeah, what a roller coaster. That was so fun. It's really great to be a part of that as our first game of many to come. Welcome to oh, New Expanded. Yeah, round six really giving us uh, some amazing play here. Two great.